What is up you guys, it is Galadon, thank you so much for stopping by, I am back at it again with another Clash of Clans video, and today we're talking about farming, you guys. Now, these are Town Hall 9 players, now far be it for me to say that Town Hall 9 is dead, there are literally millions of players still playing Town Hall 9, although, people have a reason to move up. People are trying to get to those higher Town Halls, especially with all the new cool stuff being added. So let's talk about how to get there more quickly with some of the top farming armies at Town Hall 9. Now obviously these armies can be used in different ways, shapes, and forms. What you've got right here by the Wicked Slayer from Full Attack is a relatively versatile army of Giants, Bowlers, and of course a Queen Walk right there. The Queen Walk, probably one of the top three Town Hall 9 farming armies out there right now. Now this one didn't quite go the way he planned, at least as far as the queen not staying with the healers, or the healers not staying with the queen, but he is going to get into the core, obviously, after that Dark Elixir. You can see the dead Inferno Tower right there helps out a lot, and the queen, although just about gone, is going to last long enough to help take out that Dark Elixir storage right there, and you can see thousands upon thousands of Dark Elixir... Uh, Dark Elixirs... Anyway, lots of Dark Elixir. Go into the Wicked Slayer full attack. So, yes, it's an effective army. He's got the Hog Riders in here at the end. He's just going to clean up and make sure he gets everything. He wants all the loot. And really, you guys, there are several different ways to play this. A lot of players go after total destruction. A lot of players just focus on the storages, depending upon the base design. And again, it comes down to what you're after. Are you farming for elixir, dark elixir, gold? It is going to change what you want to spend to put the army together. And then of course, just as important as army selection is base selection. Sometimes it's wise to pass up those harder to get to offers. Even if it's a huge number, you have to look at the base layout and remember where the loot is being stored. Right here, the Wicked Slayer picks up about a million and that's not even including the league bonus at Master 2. So yes, the league bonuses are huge nowadays. They're at least they're okay, they're bigger than they were. I don't know about huge, but they're bigger than they were. And troops faster, easier to train. So farming is good right now in the game, I think. Then and you're seeing a lot of players that are really focused on grinding their way through the levels. Now here's what we're talking about one more time with the Queen Walk. A lot of players using this, it's an effective way to get in towards the core of a base if you plan it out correctly. Remember that the queen can kind of wander. If you're not careful, she will head after those outside buildings. Here you can see the wall breakers helping out, carving that path for the archer queen right down to the core of this base. And then, this is probably another one of the top three farming armies, Lava Loon. A lot of players at Town Hall 9 using Lava Loon. So what you're seeing here is a queen walk specifically in to help the Lava Loon succeed once it gets into the core. And sure enough, one air defense down and the other air defense just about to go down as well. And now that really opens things up for the Lava Hounds and the Balloons. You can see she's also gotten to the Dark Elixir. Uh, Wolverine probably could have stopped right here, but no. You can see that there's half a million left and of course a lot of Dark. So he's going to spend it. He's going to make that investment in the Lava Hounds, in the Balloons. It's a little bit longer of an army to train, but there's a lot to be grabbed right here. And you can tell that Wolverine is not going to stop until he's got every drop. Now remember when Goblin Knife, if you guys aren't familiar with it, used to be an extremely popular strategy. That's really gone by the wayside lately. A lot of it, you guys have to remember, is because of the special events. That's probably above and beyond the smartest farming army of all is watch those special events on your news page. And when you've got a specific troop that is super cheap to train, use that guy, use it all day long. And that is going to grab you huge profits. The key there being that you need to be kind of a flexible attacker. It's better to have multiple attack strategies under your belt, meaning attack strategies that you know how to execute. And so in future episodes, we will break down individually these attack strategies like the Queen Walk, like yeah, Bow Witch, and of course Lava Loon, there's lots of others, Hog Riders get used in there as you saw, and of course Witch is very strong right now at Town Hall 9, but then again a lot of Town Hall 9 players are specifically focused on farming Dark Elixir. Now Buckeye Gal, this is an example of a player 
who kind of has a lot of elixir right now. So she said, eh, you know, I'm, I'm overflowing with elixir. So what am I going to train up? I'm going to train up a bunch of P.E.K.K.A.s. Why not? So she trains up an entire army of P.E.K.K.A.s. I don't know, not quite Deca P.E.K.K.A. So not quite my favorite strategy, but pretty solid nonetheless. And you can see she's got over 4,000 in Dark Elixir that she wants to get to. And the P.E.K.K.A. is also doing a great job. This, you guys, is stuff that came after the update, so obviously there are still a lot of dead bases out there. You can see those empty expos, a sure sign of a base that is ripe for the picking. So again, yes, use your clan, listen to the attacks they are using, but don't just fall in line with whatever somebody says is, oh, this is the absolute best farming army in the world because it is always going to vary upon what is happening in-game, what is happening as far as your storages, what you're aiming for, obviously. Are you working on heroes? Are you working on troops? Are you working on walls? That is going to determine the type of army you want to bring and how aggressive you need to be in getting into the core of the base. Here, Buckeye Gal not quite picking up the three-star, but she does get a massive amount of loot, and as time runs out, the P.E.K.K.A.s grab her well over half a million and... The key right there, every single drop of Dark Elixir, like I said, she had plenty of regular Elixir. There she profited about 5k, including the League bonus. So let's move on and watch another Lava Loon attack. And again, you can see we've got a Queen Walk. The Queen here exposed on the defending side. And also, check out the air defense. That is always what you're going to be going after when you've got a Lava Loon attack. Trying to get that Archer Queen out of the way. Trying to get the air defenses out of the way. And anything else that is close. Obviously, you need to focus on one kind of quadrant of the base. You can see right here that Balls is going straight in after that air defense. Ideally, he would love to get that Expo as well right there. The Archer Queen is eventually going to come around this corner. She's got the ability. You've got the Rage spell there. And beautifully, she goes after the Expo. And that is exactly what Balls wanted to happen. But check this out. The Barb King goes down. And he is going to help tank for the Archer Queen and make sure that she survives longer. That's right. Balls not after just one air defense. He wants to wrap that corner with the Archer Queen and get the next air defense out of the way as well. Obviously, the Archer Towers are going to be a good bonus. And sure enough, with the Wizards helping to clear the way, the Archer Queen now has taken out another key structure. A quarter of this base is down, but more importantly, about half of all of the air defenses are out of the way. Now, here come Balloons with Haste. They take out number three, only one air defense left, another Hasted Balloon drop, and no ADs left. So not looking good for 5972. I don't know if it's, that's the amount of Dark Elixir he's about to lose. Close to it because Balls put together a great Lava Loon attack with a multi-stage Queen Walk. So again, this multi-stage attacking is not just for Clan War, you guys. A lot of players using the Queen Walk very effectively in farming raids and even in trophy raids. I've been hit this season on the quest to 7,000 by at least one player using a Queen Walk to start out the attack. So you can see the core kind of getting cleaned out right now. The balloons have gotten all of the defenses out of the way. So they're going to work on the town hall. And you know that Balls is going to grab everything. I, I just like saying his name. I'm sorry. I just do. Balls. Okay. He's going to grab everything there is left to grab in this base. And another huge raid coming to a close. Obviously, he's focused on Dark Elixir here. A good take for Gold and Regular Elixir, but the over 4,000 Dark, a big one right there, and a great farming raid by another full attack for player. Now, let's get on to the number one easiest, cheapest, most effective, most tried and true farming raid of all time. Star Tom showing us Barch. It does not get any simpler, you guys. Now, of course, Star Tom found an exceptionally huge amount of loot on this dead base. You can see that the storages are overflowing, literally, the gold mines overflowing on the outside with gold, and that is the ideal target for a Barch attack. Now, we've talked about bases being turned into trees. This one looks like it may be headed that way, as you see the trees kind of moving in towards the base. But Tom's moving in deeply into this base with Barch, but what I like to call Jai Barch. He's got the Giants, and this is a great balance here, you guys. A lot of players just used to bring half Barbs, half Archers. And yes, you can get to pretty much the entire outer ring of buildings with that. But what about when you want to get to that second layer, maybe the third layer on one specific side, go after the Dark Elixir? That's when you want to bring the Giants 
and a few wall breakers. So right here, this I think is an ideal army setup that Star Thomas brought. This is perfect because it's extremely versatile. This is going to work against lots of different bases. Now, Star Tom didn't bring his heroes this time. Maybe they're working on upgrading, but he is definitely going to be grabbing a massive amount of loot. You can see he's barely just cleared those outer structures. He's already over 1.3 million in loot. And now the giants come in from the left-hand side as he works on one side of storages. Not focused on a three-star by any means, but he gets in deeply on this one side. And you can see he's very calculatedly taken out all of the pumps, the collectors, the mines, that's where the loot was. You can see the storages look pretty empty right here. There's less than 100,000 in loot left right now. Tom has absolutely annihilated just about everything. And remember, the vast majority of this loot is in the pumps, the collectors, not the storages. Notice how much Dark Elixir is left, and the Dark Elixir storage is just about to get destroyed. As it does, Star Tom only picks up about a third of the remaining Dark Elixir. That's because the rest of it is in that pump at the top right of your screen, right by the Barb King. But Tom had to make a decision to go after this one side of the base and wasn't able to get to that last bit of Dark Elixir. But nonetheless, I'm thinking Tom was probably focused on gold and elixir in this raid, picking up nearly 1.5 five million in resources with what is probably the easiest most effective least expensive farming army of all time barch or jai barch but let me know do you guys have amazing farming raids or amazing farming armies join galafam 2.0 or 50 galadons if your name is galadon have a fantastic day be kind to other people subscribe and come back again tomorrow for more full attacks oh i finished too early